I've got a serious problem. And no, it's not just that I hoard broken old consoles. I mean, look at them. It's like they've been on a decade long beast vacation without sunscreen. Got yellowed retro tech? Don't worry, I've been working on a solution. What am I doing? Like sunscreen is gonna save them at this point. Nah, this is way beyond SPF. This calls for something way more drastic. Like UV and uh, chemicals. Good, right? Yeah. Because obviously the best way to fix UV damage is with more UV damage. So we're building a retrobrite box. Let's get some things. I've got an idea to make them look like they're fresh off the factory line again. This is what we need. A containment vessel with perpendicular... <laughs> ...for magnetic radiation rounds, covering every square inch of our vessel. Uh, Alright, I'm not gonna bore you with the whole shopping list again, but these, these little sh** right here... I thought, oh yeah, let's use this heavy duty, probably bulletproof, outdoor grade monstrosities for my switch and wiring, because clearly overkill is my middle name. And then genius me decided to drill a hole for the switch and the socket, sounds simple right? WRONG! This plastic is so thick, I think I accidentally discovered the material they used to build tanks. I had to dremel my way through this thing like I was tunneling out of Alcatraz. Plastic fumes everywhere, dust flying in my face, it's a miracle I didn't pass out right then and there. I've probably inhaled enough molten polymer to start getting software updates to my brain. Trust me, if I could go back, I'd slap past me and say No, absolutely not! Put those back on the shelf and pick something that doesn't double as a lifeboat. My lungs are now 30% plastic and I'm pretty sure this project just shaved 10 years off of my life. Totally worth it though. So yeah, after that little adventure in lung reconstruction, I decided to keep things simple for the next step. Enter aluminum tape. Okay, so apparently the secret to curing old yellow plastic is tin foil, but not just any tin foil, this is industrial grade reflective shiny tape. Because normal foil, no no no, that's for sandwiches. This, this is, is science. science! I don't have time for fun and games and I don't have time for stowaways. Fine! The idea is simple, we're turning this box into a UV death chamber, you know, for consoles, not for people. Legal says I need to clarify that. The UV light is going to bounce around like a hyperactive toddler, ensuring every square inch of your console gets the rejuvenating treatment it deserves. Alright, next up, cutting these UV LED strips to length. It's not rocket science, but it might as well be when you realize they have specific cut points. Mess it up and congratulations you've made expensive confetti. Measure twice, cut once and hope you left enough room for soldering. This is precision engineering. Uh, or close enough. And voila! What? And voila! Every wall is now decked out in UV LEDs, ready to bounce light around like a miniature laser ray for your consoles. Who says old plastic doesn't deserve a party? Ignore the wires, they're like plot holes in a blockbuster. Uh, just don't ask questions. I think in the moment Appa can explain this better, so let's just let him handle it. Okay, so we're now working on putting everything or connecting everything together. Um, I have it hooked up so I can test it every time I did it. So it's going uh, okay ish. It works until there, so still need a lot of work. Okay, I'm almost done. Um, just need to do that side. Yeah, it takes longer than I expected. And my flashlight was out. So I needed to use a power bank with a light on it. Okay, thanks, Appa. That's some uh, wonderful, wonderful insight you got there. Yeah, sadly, we weren't done with this. Sh now, before committing to the real deal, I made this monstrosity. Why? Because I don't know what I'm doing, I never went to school for this, fixing broken stuff doesn't prepare you for whatever this is. Look at this, what does it even mean? 
a circle with a plus? Is it power? Is it a capacitor? Is it directions to Narnia? This is some Narnia shit. Your guess is as good as mine. I did software engineering, so this, this I understand. This is what a good diagram looks like. Clean, logical, organized. Okay, so let's continue. We've got the switch and we'll wire it up like this. And at the power end, we'll introduce the socket like this. And that should be wired up like this. Uh, what's the other pin for? I, I don't know, maybe for when you fuck up, it's, it's just another positive pin, uh, who cares? Then we wrap it all up with some string tubing, save, snug, and pretending I actually know what I'm doing. At the very end, we pull out the multimeter and switch it to beep mode. If it beeps, it means the connections are good enough. And everything works as it should. And here is the result. So now it should turn on. Release. It should turn on, and it does. <laughs> You have died. Your village is lost, doomed to die of starvation. Ah, that brought back memories. But yeah, it's done. We now have a retro bright box. Look at that awesome UV light. Let's look at the switch one more time. At some point I'd like to implement a heating element, so there will be a switch here or a temperature gauge or something like that. And of course, why would everything go as planned? Take a look. Notice something missing? Oh, I sure do. Turns out I totally botched the measurements, so now there's just three screws holding this together. But this totally is a problem for future APA to fix. So now, let's try it out. So, I guess this is probably a good contender. It's uh, pretty yellow. So I've got this bucket here, which we're gonna place right here. I'm gonna put this one in. Then I have some hydrogen peroxide. Now I need something to keep it from floating. This should work. So now we can, uh, we can probably turn it on. Put the lid on. Eight hours later. Okay, so it should be done right now. It's been uh, about eight, eight hours, so we'll see what it looks like. Wait, what? So I said eight hours, but that was a joke. It's been five minutes. Five whole minutes. And guess what? Nothing happened. Shocking, right? But now for real. Here is the result after an actual 8 hours of UV light. Well, more like 24 hours, because I might have forgotten it was still in there. Alright, let's be real, it doesn't look that bad. The Retrobrite actually did its job, reversing a lot of that nasty yellowing. And just to prove this is the same shell, you can still see these uneven lines where the yellowing was worse before. Those didn't fully go away, but hey, at least you know this isn't some swap out magic. But here's the thing, it's not perfect. The lettering, still readable, sure, but it's definitely faded. The colors aren't as sharp anymore and it's got this weird white outline like the UV just sucked some of the life out of it. Then there are these white specks all over the shell. Looks like it's got a bad case of UV dandruff or something. And the worst part, the shell feels way more brittle now. It's kind of expected after leaving it in for so long, which you shouldn't do. So yeah, it works, it cleaned up the yellowing, but it's far from perfect. For me, the shell is basically done for, but at least we've learned something, right? Go on, baby, go on. <laughs>